Learn these nine travel hacks to make your trips easier in 2024. I'm going to share with you guys the best tips and mistakes to avoid as a newbie traveler and how to make sure you have the best vacation ever. I've traveled to 12 different countries within my lifetime and rode on more flights than I can remember. First off, you're going to want to compare flights with different travel companies for different destinations. For example, riding on Southwest Airlines versus Delta versus Korean Airlines will most likely have significant differences. Sometimes you won't have much of a choice when it comes to choosing an airline, like how I had to ride Fiji Airways to get to Fiji from LAX in the United States if I wanted the shortest flight possible. As you can see, there are some flights with significant differences between non-stop and layovers ranging from 1 to over 6 hours. And crazy enough, sometimes the layover flights are more expensive. Booking your flights for different times and layovers also affect the prices. Always do your research on the airlines and the flights that you are taking. Some people may wonder how others are getting free or low cost flights. Well, using credit card points are the best way. I personally have the Chase Freedom Unlimited and Sapphire Preferred credit cards and you can use my link in the description below. For 60,000 bonus points just for signing up and spending 4k within 3 months which is equivalent to over 750 travel credit if redeemed on Chase Travel. The benefits include travel insurance, rental car insurance, $50 annual hotel credit, and so many other benefits. Using the link below helps both of us out. I personally use both of these credit cards and I can also pay my bills with them. I'm able to transfer the points from my unlimited card to the preferred to maximize the perks. You can also transfer the points to some airline partners, but do your research. Some other credit cards that are good for travel are American Express and Capital One. Planning your trip is usually the most important thing to do. Depending on what kind of traveler you are, I always like to plan ahead versus booking while I'm there. For hotels, I'll usually book months in advance depending if I'm staying in a busy city or something more low-key. But I'll never book when I arrive just in case they run out of availability. Do your research and group activities located within the same areas to avoid going back and forth and to save time and most likely you could walk from place to place. When I was in Japan, we grouped things to do in certain cities such as Shibuya, Arashiyama, and Osaka, and it made our life so much easier. I use apps such as TikTok, Instagram, and just word of mouth asking around with friends to find things to do. If you plan to visit some countries such as China, Japan, Taiwan, or Egypt, plus some other European countries, you can watch my videos on YouTube or Instagram. Group trips always have different expectations. It's smart to ask yourself, what kind of people am I traveling with and what do they like to do? Planning trips isn't easy. Usually, me and my friends will collaborate on planning things to do, or there's usually always that one person in the group that just goes with the flow. It's a good idea to be direct on what you want to do and if you would like to do some things alone. Traveling to different countries isn't cheap and it isn't easily accessible most of the time, so it's important to do the things that you enjoy. Visiting to different countries means that there are different dress codes and standards. For example, in Bangladesh and Egypt, it was a Muslim country and you will not find any woman with her shoulders or legs showing. You will get non-stop stares if you are caught with inappropriate clothing. One of the days when I was visiting a temple in Egypt, I wore a tight long dress and I was definitely harassed. 
Of course, some tourists still choose to wear revealing clothing while taking Instagram worthy photos, but it's always smart to bring a cover up, such as a shawl or scarf, just to be safe. Wi Fi is such an important aspect when you are traveling. I used a pocket Wi Fi in Japan and it was so easily accessible, all we needed to do was charge it every day and remember to pack it in our bags. One of the days we left our Airbnb and we were wondering why we didn't have Wi Fi, but it's because we forgot it at home. Be mindful that SIM cards don't work on all phones because I didn't know my iPhone was locked until I was in Egypt. I know some carriers, such as T Mobile, have international data, which is absolutely free, but it's not always the best option. When you are traveling, it's important to travel light. Avoid packing more than 3 ounce liquids in your carry on bags. Or else it will be confiscated. I've noticed that I was able to get away with 4 ounce toothpaste at times within domestic flights, but usually not international. Having your extra clothing and important items in your carry on or backpack is super important. You never know if your luggage is going to get lost. When I was in Finland, two people in my tour group had their luggage stuck at our origin airport because one of them left batteries inside and the other, who knows what happened. They were luggageless throughout the entire trip and had to get new clothes since it was winter. But towards the end, they finally got their luggage shipped to our destination. If you're traveling, only bring what's necessary. Nothing is worse than having to drag your heavy suitcase around the city or in public transit systems. In Japan, we mostly use the public transportation system, and our hotel is about 5 to 10 minute walk away from the station. We had to drag our suitcase around, and it was not fun. If you're questioning if you should bring something, just leave it at home. Using third party travel sites for booking hotels or other activities may sometimes have significant deals than the actual website. For example, Expedia, TripAdvisor, Booking.com are just a few third party websites to name, and you can use my links in the description below. I booked my Fiji trip with Gold's Gym Rewards since I went to that gym at the time. And the hotel discounts were one of the perks. I was able to save two to four hundred dollars off of my Hilton Fiji Resort when I went in May. Booking with third party sites may mean that some other benefits may be limited. Another important tip to remember is research your charging adapters. Make sure your electronic devices are able to be charged overseas. There are different adapters depending where you're visiting. USA wall outlets are different than Asia and European ones. Nothing is worse than arriving and not knowing where to get a charger adapter and not be able to charge your phone. When I was in Finland, I forgot to bring one, and luckily my tour guide had an extra. But then I forgot it at a hotel, but the front desk was kind enough to let me borrow another one. Today, I shared with you nine useful tips for first time and seasoned travelers. Let me know if you found any of these tips helpful in the comment section below and if there's any important information that I missed. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Miffy Explorers.